Brian, uh, what, what's your uh, what's your feel for today? How many miles? Definitely like 50. 50 miles? Yeah. Out here in uh, De Anza, California. And uh, we're going to do a of the goat trestle. And I don't know about you, bro, but I'm thinking later we find some goat meat, you know, to commemorate, commemorate this movie. Some goat yeah. meat. Goat milk, yeah, definitely. On a kebab. So it's it's gonna be it's gonna be epic here. Yep. In the middle of nowhere. Nothing around, just shrubs. Just shrub. These are some rail cars, probably from the 1960s. Definitely graffitied up. There's uh, another entrance the other way. Look out. It's pretty cool, man. Yeah. I love graffiti. Man. What are you, why are you on your phone? We're in the wilderness. There's no... I'm texting babes. Don't be jealous, bro. <laughs> babes when there's no... Just chatting with babes all day on the internet. All day. On the trail. <laughs> The colors of the desert. The brown and then like oh, that's pretty cool. Hey, I'm gonna get a video on video right now. Recreating the scene of the graffiti crime. I'm out. Real Brett. car. This is amazing. All the colors are bleed into one. I'm telling you, this is an amazing place. If you guys haven't been here before, check it out. You're gonna need a little bit of water, just a little bit. It's kind of about maybe close to 80 degrees. I think these rail cars were abandoned in the uh, in the 60s, so. As they say in train life, come aboard. During this train. Brian, did you bring your ticket? You know, right now, I feel like I should have a ticket to ride and just be able to just go all the way up to like Alaska on this train. Yeah, if you're cool with the windows being completely shattered and broken, freezing to death. Absolutely. <laughs> You do not own it, Ryan. You know we don't own this, but I feel like we do own this because there's nobody there. We kind of got our down. Yeah, for real. Yeah, I, I would agree. Uh, okay, so you get your photo, dude. It's looking good. This you getting all Instagramming up in this place. Yeah, I gotta keep up the followers and stuff. You know? Absolutely. But it would be so awesome, you know, just to come aboard this thing. Just sleep on a pillow. Just through the night, train down through Mexico. It is a pleasure to be here. If you've never been down to the goat trestle, grab your goat and let's go down to the trestle and just ride aboard. Everybody's welcome. Are you tracking tracking mileage? Yeah. How far are we gone? Oh man, it looks like the tunnel's closed. Okay, we're just gonna have to go around. Oh man, what a beautiful vista! What a beautiful view! Thanks, I've been working on it. Yeah. Okay. I've been I've doing squats. And squats is good. Curls. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So, ah, uh, telephone pole. This is what we got to look for. A lot of telephone pole. Just complete wilderness. Complete abandoned into the wilderness.
did it, bro. Turn around. I'm still videotaping. Rumor has it that when the railroad was completed, they drove in one last spike to commemorate the completion and said, heck yeah, we're done. Check it out. This is what's happening when you use cell phones. They cut down the wires of the telephone. It's going in through tunnel six. Okay guys, we just came out of tunnel six. It's amazing. It's unbelievable what human beings can accomplish, it's, especially with the limited technology. If you look into the, uh, the through the beams, that's just pure, pure law. And then they've got the girders, they went sideways. It's just unbelievable what people have done here. We are coming out of the tunnel. The first tunnel, we're going over the train track. This is pretty amazed. Pretty excited about this. A little over three and a half miles. It's a beautiful day with the Santa Anas. And uh, this is just wide open spaces, just like the Dixie Chicks song. I've always liked Marty. Okay, man, we're doing it. We are in the wilderness. We've returned to wild. This travel poster depicts customers going on the Southern Pacific Railway from Arizona to San Diego for a weekend trip. Many of them enjoyed going through the Carrizo Gorge. Okay, so they say X marks the spot, but apparently four X's doesn't mark anything because there was nothing here. So why there's four X's is a mystery to everyone. You are in an amazing little uh, structure here. What do yeah. you suppose was used for here? It's my porta potty. Is it? Yeah. Ready? Yeah. He just he's he's going he's in the he's in the crouching tiger position. Yeah. Wow. Okay. And then oh my goodness gracious! You know what this was for right here? The people that actually miss. The porter potty had to jump off. They sent him on a, a very small little. Uh, they sent him off this track. Here. There's graffiti from 1958. Is that right? Right now, you are wearing your South American, if I'm correct, beanie, and you have your sun hat for really all occasions. Yeah, yeah. I have my speedo for later. Speedo for later. Gotta have everything. Just in case we find a, a well. A, a oasis. It could be amazing. Okay, so here we are, two and a half miles in, maybe a little more, and there's an actual functioning helicopter here. Somebody came in to, I don't know, maybe do a hike, and they just brought their chopper in, so. Uh, who knows what else we're going to find out here in the Anza Borrego Desert. Here's another abandoned car, probably from the 1960s. With a fellow traveler, Care, hey, he's coming here to uh, on his pilgrimage to see the trestle. So uh, what have you read about this place, Care? Yeah, so that was one hiker who put up the blog post, and he said that this was called an impossible railway because rail type because no one thought that it would be possible to build something out here. But they wanted to connect other areas through the desert in San Diego, all the way to Mexico, so that people don't have to go all the way to LA for the commute. So one company did this. I think it costed them around sixteen million dollars. 
current currency to hold this thing and yeah that's how we end up here and the cars that you find here they are not from california they are a couple of them are from chicago and then i don't know the other one where the other one is from but it's not from here it's from east or or north east yeah and then it's what's interesting about this uh train is this how did it just break down they left it here or what yeah, I don't know about this, but there are, we will find them in the front, but those are, I think, the derailments. So the trains derailed and ah. they fell into the canyon. Unbelievable. Yeah, Unbelievable. So you'll probably find a couple of cars further down the road. Yeah, they definitely, this thing was on fire at this one time. This was on fire, probably, yeah. yeah. Well, Kerry, thank you so much, sir, for your uh, wisdom and knowledge on and research on uh, the Goat Trust. I appreciate it. Yeah, we, we both are exploring it for the first time. It's just something that I read so that I don't get lost here. <laughs> ah, I love it. Where are you from? <laughs> from uh, San Clemente. From San Clemente. All the way, all the way down to East County, San Diego. Thank yeah. you, sir. I think we've got still quite a ways to go. So maybe close to three miles. So we got a biker coming through. we got a mountain biker guy coming by. Check this out. You go all the way down there? What's that? You went all the way down? Sorry, I can't hear you. What? Okay. Mountain biker. Four miles in, apparently. So, sir, what's going on? Apparently, we cannot cross through into this tunnel. Why is that? Yeah, it looks like they have a gate set up at this tunnel to prevent people from going through, but there's a service road that goes. How far we got to go around the service road? Uh, it's pretty far, at least a mile. A mile? Yeah. Is it, is it worth it going all the way to the end? Yeah, it's definitely worth it. The bridge is 200 feet tall, so. Awesome. It's pretty cool. All right, thanks, man. Appreciate yeah, of it. Of course. All right, take care. All this metal tubing. This must be, this is Tunnel 8. Tunnel 8, you cannot go in. It's about a mile hike to the other side. It's uh, it's pretty cray cray. We're gonna have to go around this. We're gonna have to go around the ravine. Ryan's trying to let. Ryan's trying to get into the. It's not the pearly gates, but it's the rusty gates. Ah! Let me in. I think I think the only person who was able to break through this was Samson. Yeah, unfortunately, when the chick got us out of that, he couldn't have any joints. Too bad, because it's, it's, uh, the air smells good. Mmm, musty. And cold. Musty and cold, my friends. Musty and cold. The beginning of the side, uh, what do we want to call this? The side route. Cave is right here. It's, fortunately, it's locked. So uh, we're going to handle this the way the people and the prospectors did on the burrows. Ryan, how would you describe the sound of a burrow? Could probably, you do? Probably a mattress, right? Del Cal on the trail. According to one of the gentlemen that I talked to on the path, we're about four miles in and uh, feeling good. Plenty of food and supplies. We will have our California burritos finish line. Enjoy the video, guys. Now, this is the tunnel that we could have walked through, but we had about a mile detour because there is the gate on the other side of the tunnel that is locked due to not wanting too much traffic to go into there and here is a platform on top of the platform it looks like there is a port and I am thinking water was poured into the steam trains through there perhaps the thing looks like it's over a ton of really cool iron platform a lot of workmanship, all these rivets, and uh, yeah, this is pretty historic, and 
and antiquity of this abandoned railroad. And I'm told that if we were to restore this, it would cost about $100 million to restore the whole railroad. According to some little bit of research I've done and people I've talked to, these tracks will take you into Arizona and at one time went into Mexico. Uh, but uh, the train tracks now run right into the border wall. So enjoy the video, guys. Enjoy the scenery. If you come out here, please bring plenty of food, plenty of water. Make sure you got your electrolytes. Come out with a friend. Maybe you need some walking sticks. If you're coming here early in the day, that's best. You have more sunlight. If you come here a little later, I figure you're going to need about, oh, three hours in and three hours in out on foot or four in and four out. And if you're coming here, like I said, in the later afternoon, you definitely want to bring a headlight. Uh, walkie talkies would be recommended because there is no cell service at the beginning of the train tracks. So yeah, enjoy this and hopefully you will find yourself enjoying this beautiful, beautiful place out here in God's country. Indeed. Okay. This could be the one mile tunnel. So we're going in, going to do it big time with the headlamp. And uh, yeah, enjoy guys. Start to think about what you want to bring. Do you want a Subway sandwich? A Cali burrito? What's going to be your meal? Going to the goat, trust me. Okay. You can see all the all the rocks that were blown out. Totally carved by the hand of man. Incredible. Incredible. Nice and breezy. It's probably about 65 degrees. We're about two miles out. It's gonna be pretty amazing. We're almost there. So I think one of the things we have to think about, if you want to go and do this goat trestle, it's a total accomplishment. I think it's a lot of fun. And you have to think to yourself, why do you want to do it? Is it a fitness challenge? Is it just a general life accomplishment? I mean, how often do we get to go on and go into the wilderness and basically Transport yourself back to the early 1900s. Feels good. I would definitely encourage you to train and walk at least 10 miles a week if you don't exercise regularly. Get yourself geared up for this. But uh, it's also important to have a good pair of shoes. Hiking boots are recommended. And you need a camel pack. I said a headlight, plenty of food and snacks. Load up on those uh, carbs and sugars and bring some Pedialyte packs. Uh, this could be done in about three liters of water today. I brought about six. The last time I went on and did this, uh, it was super hot. So I would definitely say at least three liters of water. Maybe a little first aid kit too. It's always good to come with a friend just in case something goes wrong. Okay, here we are. Tunnel 14. And the mushroom. It's about a mile or so, and then we should be there. How much more we got, guys? To the channel, to the 15 more. Nice. Thank you. Okay. Apparently, Tunnel 15 is it. Ryan, you've done this before, my friend. Yeah. Tell me what it's like for you to be here right now. Oh, man. It's so beautiful right now, this time of day with the shallows. It's cool. I want to cool the sea uh, in your face when you see it. Oh, my goodness. I don't believe it. Ricardo del California, about to 
Make a dream come true. I've always wanted to walk across an old timey trestle. So the longest, this is it. The longest, curved wooden trestle in the world. longest wooden trestle in the world, guys. This is curved. in curved, might add. Curved. Curved. We're going to be here. We're going to experience this. This is a dream of mine. This is it. The largest longest curved trestle bridge in the entire world. We are here eight miles in from Acumba, California. Incredible. And I'm told by Ryan, if you keep following this, there's another tunnel. Keep going, keep going, keep going. There's some more bridges out in the distance. You can keep going if you want. These are called the Seven Sisters. I'm absolutely I came here at the perfect, perfect time. Absolutely beautiful. About 200 feet down. Absolutely incredible architectural feat here on the Goat Trestle. Yeah, amazing. Enjoy. I'm absolutely speechless. And time. Time for breathing. Brandon and family from El Cajon, California. You guys did something crazy. We, <laughs> me and my buddy, we went like eight miles in from Hakumba. You guys did what? Uh, we got three. Yeah, three so far. But how did you get here? So we, had, we parked uh, off of Dos Cabezas uh -huh. and, uh, you know, bouldered and rocked over. There's, there's a trail. It's uh, like 1400 feet elevation gain uh -huh. this direction and then a thousand back <laughs> so uh for the amateur person who's ever done that would you recommend or no grown adults have ride on this hike <laughs> on multiple occasions okay so <laughs> it's a back is, you know at that point you're you're climbing up out of this canyon uh, it's, it's pretty strenuous okay so i wouldn't i'd come with someone who's been here before yeah, okay for sure do not try this at home <laughs> thanks guys yeah have a good one. Thank you. Amazing, amazing. We did it, bro, and you are having a carne asada burrito from some place in Lakeside. It looks delish. Yeah. This yeah. is the reward, man. The burritos. Yeah, man. Nice and warm here, too. Nice and warm. This is it. Insane. Feel like I'm in a western. Okay, eight miles in, go trestle, built in the 1920s, as you can see. It's amazing, it's incredible, it's a work of art, and it's a, uh, it shows what man can do when he puts his mind to do amazing things. So, hope you guys can make it out here. Uh, a little tired, we got eight miles to go. I think we did this in about three and a half hours, so we should be back around what, seven o'clock? Probably. We'll see some Hopefully. stars out yep. a little earlier. Some serious stars. And uh, Ricardo Del California, another episode of Travel Oddities here out in Hakuna Springs. Happy Cabin's Country. Thank you very much. You love the cactus. Oh, man. Give me a hug. Oh my god! Oh, why'd I do that? Now, with everything that looks beautiful, Watch it out. could be painful.
Thanks again for watching the Ricardo Del California show. If you like what you saw today, please subscribe and we'll see you real soon.